What's going on folks, Ted from Nerd Immersion here, and we are gonna dive into the new Black Storm Bloodline Sorcerer from Jetpack 7 as part of the Black Storm Realms Kickstarter. Full stop, I am part of the team working on the Black Storm Realms book. I've done a whole video on it, but a quick primer is, hey, if you miss Spelljammer, and it doesn't exist in fifth edition as we know, and you want a cool space-faring fantasy setting Dungeons and Dragons game, then, or, or campaign setting rather, this is for you. So unlike some of the other things that have existed out there that use the fifth edition rule set to make a sci-fi game, where it is pretty much science fiction and you are dealing with technology and all that kind of stuff set in a sci-fi world just using fifth edition mechanics, this isn't that. This is a space fantasy setting in 5th edition, so your typical fantasy tropes and things still exist, your high magic, your elves, your dwarves, and so on, but it's what if they also had space travel and there was transferring the space and that kind of a thing. So it is a much more gritty, realistic version of the, the space fantasy genre, whereas Spelljammer was kind of weird and acid trippy. This is not that. This is a more serious take on that. Anyway, um... So I'm going to jump over to the Kickstarter right now. Uh, there'll be a link to the Kickstarter in the description down below. But as I mentioned in the last video, uh, as you can see, there's 13 days left to go. Uh, we are well past our initial funding goal, and we are in stretch uh, stretch goal mode now. Um, and yeah, I, I just wanted to showcase this right here. If you click, first of all, you can see this to see a preview of all previous Jetpack 7 works. Uh, from a variety of different things, uh, from like legendary dragons and masters and minions, just to make it so that I'm not completely making it up. If we scroll down here, you'll see that I'm, you know, top billing, honestly, which is kind of, uh, a little bit of an honor for me. Uh, but my main, um, my main role in this is balance and fifth edition mechanics and, that's actually why I want to talk to you about the Bloodstorm, uh, Blackstorm Bloodline Sorcerer, because, we went through many, many, many revisions to get to where we are. Now, while it is still in early kind of access to play tests, so if something really comes out as super broken, we can adjust it before it ends up in the final document. And it has gone through several iterations even since it's been available to the public. Uh, but I just wanted to showcase it to you there. Also, by the way, since we broke $60,000 uh, raised, it's going to get a subclass from me in the book, actually written and designed by me, which I'll tell you right now is the Gravity Domain Cleric. And we haven't figured out what the final one of the higher level stretch goals will be. At 70,000, we're unlocking a realm generator to help you generate your own realms for use in, uh, in this campaign setting. But the next goal above that, I believe, will be a secondary subclass created by me, which will be a paladin subclass. And as you know, is my favorite class. So we're going to go ahead and click this link, and it's going to take us to a PDF of the Black Storm. It's over here on Dropbox, um, and we can go ahead and just close these things down. And you can see right here, Black Storm Realms, and we'll zoom out a little bit. Uh, and you can see there's, a, I believe this is a source for right here. So we have a lot of really great flavor text on this, this whole red sidebar you see here is an entire section of flavor text, all describing uh, the black storm, which for lack of a better term is space, right? The, the black storm will be your black void of space and sort of how it works together. Um, and this is basically the, the, I'm not gonna read through the entire flavor text, you can do that on your own, but it's essentially a master teaching their pupil about how the black storm interacts. The ribbon, ribbons and spheres is, uh, is I guess, sort of a theme here. Um, but you can alter, grab, manipulate, twist, and combine together to do different things. And that's sort of the lore behind the Black Storm Sorcerer. So it says right here, ribbons and spheres of magical energy that exist in a Black Storm are unseen by most, but not you. Sorcerer is born with the ability to not only discern these energies, but also harness their power to twist reality are exceedingly rare, and your abilities are often misunderstood by your fellow spellcasters. The Black Storm holds many mysteries, but your innate understanding of the magical ribbons and spheres that stretch and drift within the tapestry of reality grants you the ability to perform magics that defy explanation. However, without needing to be told, you know that for every manipulation of great power, there are also unseen consequences, and we built that into the class. So I will say one of the first things that I did when I came on board to the team was suggest additional 
uh, bloodline spells, origin spells, which you see here, which is this Black Storm magic section. Um, for those of you who are curious, right, this is an open game license, so we are limited in the spells that we can create. They have to be in the realm of the open game license, which I think it's in version 5.1 is out there. So even if you're like, oh, I really love Steel Wind Strike or something like that, that's not part of the open game license, we can't include it. So you can see the spells we picked here. These are, again, automatically known by the sorcerer at the level associated with this table and always prepared, doesn't count against their spells known. Detect Magic Sanctuary, Invisibility Magic Weapon, Blink Counterspell, Banishment, Black Tentacles. Again, Black Tentacles is the generic version of it, just kind of like you have Hideous Laughter and other things like that, Arcane Hand and so on. And then Creation and Wall of Force. So that you get... All of them get that. As you level up, you get additional spells. Then we gave them Sphere Empowerment, right? So at first level, um, you can tap into the magical spheres that permeate the realms. Uh, and as a bonus action, you can pull a sphere from the ether and evoke one of the two following effects. Increase your armor class by two for 10 minutes. And then beginning at level two, when you get access to sorcery points, you can spend a sorcery point to increase that bonus to AC by one to a total of plus three. The thought process behind this is it sort of mimics the um, Shield of Faith spell, which is we went through a lot of alterations of how this should work. And it was an action originally. and We went back and forth. So I just said, let's use Shield of Faith as the basis, which is what you see there. Or when you cast a spell of first level or higher that does damage, you can empower it. Choose one of the targets damaged by the spell, and that target takes an additional D4 damage per level of the spell cast. So again, if you cast a, if you choose to use this, you can use it as a bonus action and then cast a spell, right? So that works out in your favor. So even if you don't take Quicken spell as a sorcerer, you can bonus action boost the damage. Um, and it's first level or higher. So if you use a first level spell slot, it will deal an extra D4 damage. If you choose to use a second level spell, cast a second level spell, it will deal 2d4 damage. And what's important to note there is for balance purposes, it's choose one of the targets damaged by your spell. We've seen this. This is kind of the standard mechanic that exists for a lot of these sort of abilities. So like even if you cast a fireball, fireball would deal an extra 3d4 damage if you use this but it would deal an extra 3d4 damage to only one of the targets. Even if your fireball hit 15 people, you would pick one to get the extra damage. And I thought that that was a relatively balanced thing. It's only a d4. It's offset by the fact that it is force damage, but you have to use a bonus action first. So, um, it ha and it does has to deal damage, right? So if you use it and then you miss with your spell, it obviously doesn't go off. And then you can use this uh, a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, and you get all uses back on a long rest. I originally was leaning towards charisma modifier times per long rest, but we've seen them kind of Wizards of the Coast switch over to the use of proficiency bonus number of times. So I decided to go in vain with the newer stuff we've seen and go with proficiency bonus. I will also say that again, I did not design this subclass. Um, I just came in to throw out ideas for mechanics and uh, tweak things where balance was concerned. Then we also have Black Storm Attunement, um, which is you gain proficiency in the Arcana skill if you don't already have it. And when you make an intelligence check related to the Black Storm, sort of the whole thing that makes you, uni uni the, you unique, you add twice your proficiency bonus instead of uh, any proficiency bonus you normally apply. Uh, we went back and forth a lot on how to figure out where to land on this, but I ended up using this option. So it gives you a little bit of a skill bonus. And if you're trying to be, uh, you know, understand the thing that you're kind of meant to know, you would in theory be an expert and right? have expertise as it were. And then beginning at second level, whenever you spend at least one sorcery point, you must roll on the black storm field effects chart below. And you'll see it, we'll get down to it. It is a very wild magic, similar vibe. Um, and it, you know, things get altered, but it's whenever we also wanted to remove the wishy-washy nature of the wild magic kind of concept where if this happens and the DM says it and you do this and you roll a one, then it goes off. So because your magic is sort of powered by the black storm and the, your kind of innate magical abilities are also altered by your ability to use sorcery points for uh, for meta magic. Uh, whenever you spend a sorcery point. Well, it also is whenever you spend a sorcery point. So that would then alter it. But if you were to say, use a sorcery point here to add a plus one bonus to your AC for sphere empowerment, it would trigger for that. 
So it's just whenever you're kind of tapping into your bloodline powers, uh, the nature of the black storm being kind of wild and chaotic causes funky stuff to happen. And we'll talk about that. Then we gave Ribbon Weaver here at 6th level. I basically didn't touch this at all. This pretty much stood as it was with a couple of wording tweaks. Um, but you reach out and take hold of the magical ribbons that flow and twist unseen through your immediate surroundings. By twisting, pulling, and even temporarily tying these ribbons, you may perform incredible feats of magic that strengthen or deplete the magical energy around you, your allies, or even your enemies. You can choose to use one of these uh, once per long rest. So there's three options. You can use each three. Oh, wait. Choose one of the following once per long rest. Yeah. Um, so we have Ribbon of Surety. Um, as a reaction, when an ally you can see within 60 feet of you hits a creature with an attack, you can spend a sorcery point to increase the damage. For every sorcery point spent, the attack does an additional 1d6 force damage. So it's sort of, it's an interesting concept because it's sort of almost like a divine smite. Um, cause it went, but you are powering it rather than like your opponent or your, your teammate powering it. So you have to have your reaction. It costs a sorcery point at minimum to do it, but it's every sorcery point you spend that you can add D sixes to this damage. But remember you're spending sorcery points. So that's going to trigger the black storm field effect table. So it's got a little bit of an offset. Then we have the ribbon of lassitude. Um, uh, let's see, ribbon, uh, to drain magical energy, uh, magical energy from a spell. When you take damage from a spell, as a reaction, you can reduce that damage by a d6 per sorcery point spent. So the thought process on this is the first one was a little bit of an offensive using the Black Storm to alter your ally's damage. This one is using it to lower damage dealt, um, to you. So when someone impacts you with a spell, whether that be as part of an AoE, like a fireball, or some, a single target thing like disintegrate, you can, again, it's not going to stop it completely. Maybe you luck out and you pass your saving throw, so you cut the damage in half. Maybe you have resistance in some form, so the damage is lessened even further. But for each sorcery point spent, you reduce the damage by a d6. Again, um, definitely more of a panic button. Uh, might also help you succeed on a concentration check that you would normally, normally be unotherwise able to succeed on. And then we lastly, we have the Ribbon of Echoes, which is probably like the big daddy. This is the big hit, heavy hitter of this ability here. As a reaction, when a creature you can see within 60 feet of you casts a spell that targets yourself or a single creature, so only single target spells, not AoE, you can spend three sorcery points to twist and contort the Ribbons of the Black Storm to echo the effects of one spell back onto its caster instead of the original target. Use the original caster's spell attack modifier, spell save DC, for any attack or saving throws that need to be made. If the spell has an area of effect, the reflected spell center is, so that's actually kind of interesting. I'm just, as we're reading this. Um, so it says that targets, your, uh, cast a spell that targets yourself or a single creature. So we might actually just need to remove this piece right here. Um, Cause it says cast a spell that target, yeah, yourself or a single creature, meaning it's a single target hit. So we may need to change that, but anyway. Uh, you can spend three sorcery points to twisting and toward it, and basically you're reflecting the spell back on them using their ability modifiers. But the last thing here says if the spell has an area of effect, the reflected spell's target is centered on the original caster rate. So in theory, if they were casting fireball, you'd reflect the fireball on them. And it's kind of like a counter spell as well, right? Because it's 60 feet, you need to see them. And it will be limited almost by the same things that counter spell is limited. If you can't understand that they're casting a spell, you can't counter it. Uh, but it's a counter and a reflect. Um, but the original thought process, I think, was if you cast a fireball and it would be centered on you, or you were gonna, they were going to hit you, you'd reflect it back and it would start it, it would center on them. But because we changed it to be targets yourself or a single creature, we need to remove this. This last line here redundant because there is no area of effect. And then at fourteen, you get the black storm manipulator. Uh, when you cast a spell that deals damage, you can choose to increase its potency. Uh, dealing maximum damage with the spell. Should the spell deal sequential damage, only the additional damage may be maxed. And the reason we put that in there is because sorcerers have access to things like Chaos Bolt, where if you hit with the first damage, it can jump to another creature. So only the initial target is damaged. Uh, and then once you use this ability, you can't use it again until you complete a long rest, or you spend eight sorcery points to recharge it. So the thought process is, you know, it's similar to an Evocation Wizard's over channel, where they can deal maximum damage with a spell, but the Evocation Wizard can do it a whole bunch with just the downside of them taking damage, but they're limited in what spell they can use. I think it's only up to fifth level. Ours lets you go and do any spell, 
but it's a once per long rest unless you want to spend eight sorcery points, which is pretty hefty at the most amount you'd ever be able to do if you had all your sorcery points would be three unless you're doing swapping back and forth. But again, if you're spending sorcery points to get these back, then you are triggering, 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 wow, I can't talk today, the Black Storm field effects table. In addition, whenever you roll a natural 20 uh, on any spell with a spell attack roll against an enemy target, you tap into the font of the Black Storm and get a sorcery point back. So that was just like a little fun extra thing. It was uh, not a super common thing because there's, as we know, there's not a ton of attacking spells. Um, but uh, so it does work with cantrips. If you happen to roll a natural 20, you will get a one singular sorcery point back. Um, and we also made sure we put it in against an enemy target because uh, there was the thought process of, oh, if any time I roll a natural 20 on a, a, an attack roll, I can get a sorcery point back. What's stopping me from shooting Firebolt into the ground consistently till I roll a natural 20 and just recharge all my sorcery points? So we may specify that it has to be against a target, not an object, an enemy target, so that you're not just like using, uh, you know, things like a cantrip to just regenerate sorcery points. Just take a half an hour after the combat ends and just shoot Firebolt into the dirt. Um, and, you know, one sorcery point regen on a critical hit isn't crazy, and it's, again, only on a critical hit. And then lastly, Black Storm Traveler. This is a really cool ability. This is a um, teleport, basically, but you gain the ability to fuse your own magical energies with those ribbons around you. Uh, once per short rest, you may teleport up to 120 feet away to an unoccupied space you can see as a bonus action. In addition, you can bring allies with you at a cost. For each sorcery point spent, one ally within 20 feet of you may move with you to an empty space within 20 feet. And then bending the energies of the Black Storm also allows you to travel great distances, even crossing from one realm to another, but not between planes. As an action, you may travel to any location you are familiar with on any realm, for every sorcery point when you spend, uh, every sorcery point you spend, you bring one ally with you. You must uh, once you use this feature, you can't use it again until you complete a long rest. Uh, you use this ability to travel to locations known as sanctuaries, pockets of space among the Black Storm maintained by sorcerers as a space of safety and neutrality. You and your allies can stay in a sanctuary as long as you choose. However, no combat is allowed within a sanctuary. Any violations within, uh, or sorry, will lead to a permanent expulsion from that single sanctuary location. Um, so, uh, I, I don't know if it, I actually can't remember if that's supposed to be a second or third ability that you can also choose to go to a sanctuary, because um, this has let you go between any place you're familiar with. So I think the sanctuaries was a third ability, or it might be tied to this. It just seems a little bit unclear. But the thought process is this is a capstone a high level capstone ability if you make it 18 levels deep into sorcerer uh so it should be powerful and that was the thought process and then lastly here we have the black storm field effects table which is kind of what i alluded to and we sort of put in uh again i didn't do this was most of these other abilities that i've been talking about other than when i specified were not uh put in there by me they were all originally designed by the team um and these were basically um it's only a d20 um as it stands right now uh and it's basically good bad neutral sort of thing kind of similar to what you're familiar with so we'll look through these so you uh for we'll just go sequentially you and one random target within 60 feet are pulled towards each other um as if falling each creature must make a deck save on a failure you're pulled towards the target if both you and the target fail you're pulled towards each other uh then a sphere within your grasp radiates negative magic energy one random uh one random magical effect within 30 feet of you is dispelled. Uh, a small temporary tear in reality appears 10 feet in front of you. Anything one foot in diameter or smaller that's pushed into or held inside the hole is lost forever at the beginning of your next turn. So there's also potential combos using some of these if you're able to... You can't generate them uh, reliably, but... You and one other random creature chosen within, uh, within 30 feet who is on solid ground immediately switch positions. Does not provoke a tax of opportunity. For 1d4 minutes, you are polymorphed into a Puggin. If you drop to zero hit points, you will revert back. See Polymorph spell for further details. I'll show you what a Puggin is in just a sec. Uh, a sphere in your vicinity cracks open, and from it emerges an ethereal weapon that floats near you for one minute. Once per round, the attack uh, weapon attacks an enemy that comes within 15 feet of it. Uh, the weapon uh, makes a melee spell attack. Using your modifier, does a d8 plus your spellcasting modifier force damage. It's basically a spiritual weapon. 
You do not control this weapon. It acts on its own, moving towards and attacking threats within range, and it kind of does increase damage uh, on the cantrip scaling level by a d8. Uh, the Black Storm charges with, uh, you with potent energy. The next spell uh, you roll that does damage, uh, successful spell attack roll, oh, within the next minute does maximum damage. So not any spell, just attacking ones. Uh, a random non-magical weapon, uh, non-magical item, sorry, or weapon within 30 feet of you explodes into fragments and dust. Should the item be carried by another creature, they must make a DC 13 dex save or take a D8 piercing damage. Uh, and then it kind of scales up at cantrip levels. The DC goes up by 2, uh, as does the damage by a D8. So 2D8 for DC 15, and then eventually it's 17, 48, DC 19. The DM can choose at random by counting the number of eligible, eligible items and then rolling if they want to. Uh, your manipulation of a sphere causes a ripple in time. If you aren't already first in the initiative order next round, you will be for that round, and then it reverts back. Uh, two ribbons have hidden ties to the one you selected until the end of your next turn. All objects and creatures within 30 feet of you are weighed down. The movement speed of all creatures are halved, and a melee weapon attack uh, rolls are at disadvantage within the area. Uh, we've got six pips of starlight born from the inky darkness. The black storm swirl around you for a minute. Any creature that looks at you while targeting you for an attack must make a constitution saving throw or be blinded, uh, DC 13. Additionally, as a bonus action, you can choose to fire one of the starlights at a creature within 60 feet. On a hit, it does 2d6 fire damage. And then again, the DC goes up each time by two, as does the damage at cantrip scaling levels. Uh, your manipulation of reality has caused a freak weather anomaly. All creature, you and all creatures within 15 feet must make a DC 13 dex save or take a D8 lightning damage. Also scales. A black storm elemental, which I'll show you in a second here, is summoned from the energies you have stirred. It appears in a random location within 60 feet. It attacks the nearest target, including you, on initiative count 20. Uh, the elemental returns to its original plane of existence immediately. The number of elementals that appear increases by one on cantrip scaling levels up to a total of four. Uh, the force of creation rejuvenate you and your allies up to six creatures you can see within 30 feet of you regain 2d8 plus your charisma modifier and hit points uh you have pulled too hard on a ribbon and caused a twist time stops for a 10 foot radius around you and resumes one hour later anyone entering the area of effect is also subject to the stoppage of time uh the rare sphere you selected was tied physically to an ally that ally gains 2d8 temporary hit points and the two of you are able to communicate telepathically for one hour regardless of distance the sphere you're working on within radiates repulsive energy until the end of your next turn. Any spell uh, cast with you as the target will reflect back to the caster. Use your spell attack modifier and spell save DC for the reflected spell if applicable as per the spell type. That applies uh, to beneficial magic as well. So that it can't heal, it'll get reflected back. Um, a ribbon you are holding charges with cosmic energy. Uh, the target must make, uh, lashes out a nearby enemy. The target must make a DC 13 strength saving throw, have its movement reduced to zero uh for one minute and this again scales with cantrip scaling levels you are unable to avoid wrapping a sphere with a ribbon and have caused a ripple in reality you and every creature within 60 feet of you is granted an extra action on their turn similar to the action surge ability and then 20 is rolled twice on this table both effects roll uh rolled occur as written and then here's our black storm elemental this is a standard elemental in the same vein as the fire water earth air elementals here uh, and it has a lot of these similar ability, similar abilities. Here's kind of showing what it looks like here. We got a little bit of history, backstory on it as well. So this is also, I guess, a preview of one of the creatures that will be in there as well. Um, and it, it pretty much has standard abilities, right? It's got the kind of um, this nebulous form ability. It's kind of similar to a fire elemental, right? It can squeeze through spaces. And if someone hits it with a melee attack, they take force damage. Um, they might be stunned. Um... It's vulnerable to necrotic damage, um, but it is immune to rift force and radiant, resistant to non-magical blood and piercing slashing. Uh, it can make two touch attacks. Its touch attacks do 2d8 plus four force damage. I was originally like, oh, touch attacks, that's a weird name that we haven't used that terminology in fifth edition, but it's actually, I think, what fire elementals attacks are. And then on a recharge four to six, it can do a cosmic pulse. Each creature within 20 feet must make a DC 15 dex save or takes 46 radiant damage. Uh, half on a success and then we have a pug in here which is basically a pug dragon um they're super cute and they do have the ability uh compelled petting any non-evil humanoid within five feet uh or sorry within 20 feet must make a dc 13 wisdom save or be compelled to pet it and that's here because one of the options is you could be turned into a pug in 
uh, as part of the Black Storm Realm effects. And then again, there's just the background of who's worked on it, you know, the lead designer, uh, writing and design team, and then so on. And then just the standard open game license stuff, and then other things by Jetpack 7. So that is my preview there of the Blackstorm uh, Bloodline Sorcerer there. Uh, I'm super excited to be working on part of the design team. And again, I'm super excited to eventually possibly share with you before the release of uh, the Kickstarter, the Gravity Domain Cleric that I worked on, because I'm pretty proud of how it turned out. Uh, but, you know, if, if you saw anything glaringly over the top, like unbalanced that came to you and maybe we're just missed it because we're close to it, please leave your thoughts in the comments down below. I'd love to hear it. And um, also, uh, I was thinking, and I'll, I'll pose this to all of you, what are your thoughts on only a D20 for the Blackstorm field effects table? Um, you know, maybe we could expand it, uh, and then that would be cool. But let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Again, link in the description, and it'll be pinned at the top of the comments if you'd like to go and back uh, this Kickstarter as well. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.